This is Mark Damiser, controller of Radio 4, and I'm meeting Sam Ross. What does your job involve? What is your role? It's a terrible title, isn't it? It's like a George Orwell um, controller, um, fat controller, thin controller, right. controller of Radio 4. Um, the thing that I do is construct the schedule, so I decide what programmes go out and in what order. And then you sort of pick the best ideas that come your way and you try and give them the maximum amount of encouragement and get the most out of the producers. But, I mean, the really important thing to understand is that I don't have all the ideas. I don't even have the best ideas. My job is to get other people to come up with really good ideas and to make them feel that they're in a kind of space where they can give of their very, very best and take creative risks and be rewarded for them. So it's as much enabling other people to do things as it is doing things myself. So you're a regulator? Well, I'm not a regulator in the sense that I decide whether it's in the legal or not legal, or that it fulfills the terms of the BBC's remit. I've got people above me who do that. But uh, in the sense that it's not a completely centralised activity and that you are trying to encourage the whole time other people to do things, yeah, but not, not in a formal sense. How did you uh, get into radio in the first place? I began my BBC career in radio, oddly. I was at the World Service. Uh, in the early 80s, and I didn't like it very much. It was a rather restricted environment. Uh, there wasn't really a great deal of adventure in the way that things were going on there. Uh, and so I left for a while, and then I came back to the BBC, and actually I spent the next 20 years or so in news, which was slightly more television than radio in my case. Well, actually, it was more television than radio, so I edited the main evening news uh, and became head of current affairs and so on and so forth. But throughout my whole life, uh, at least as an adult, I've been listening to Radio 4. Mm -hmm. So when the job came up in 2004, uh, it was one of those jobs that I'd always wanted. I thought you had to have it. Well, um, I wanted it, and they were very kind <laughs> enough to give it to me, but it was one of the two or three jobs in the BBC I'd always wanted, and probably more than any other single job. What was your, what's was your? been your proudest moment? What's been my proudest moment? That's a really, really um, good question. Uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll get to that. The most notorious moment was when I abolished this medley of songs um, uh, folk songs at half past five in the morning which used to begin the Radio 4 day and that ended up with Prime Minister's Question Time and early day motion in Parliament and demonstrations and petitions that was the tricky moment okay. um, I suppose it's when you take a creative risk and it kind of comes off or at least you think it comes off I mean a quite a good example is when uh, this great Radio 4 presenter John Peel died uh, he'd also been a great presenter on Radio 1 but he died uh, in 2004 and I had to decide what to do about his programme and I lost the programme because I thought it wouldn't be as good without him and I put in another programme and that was quite scary. So it's when you take a creative risk and it works, that's probably the nicest thing. Uh, people predicted many times over in the last few decades that TV would crush radio. In fact, uh, radio has held up better than TV. There is still a tremendous amount of listening going on. Radio for nine and a half million people 13 hours a week on average, we're in quite decent shape. Uh, and, and you can't rely on it forever in the day being like that. But there is something uniquely powerful about Radio 4. It's offering you something that no other channel is doing. I mean, there is a kind of intelligence about it, and there's a range um, to it. Uh, and of course, not everything works out, but it's mostly still highly creative stuff that's going there without a tremendous amount of technical palaver to get from the idea that you've got in your head to what comes out uh, on that little, little box called a radio at home or a computer or wherever it comes out. Whereas the process of making you know, television programs, and I've done it, but the process of making television programs is incredibly cumbersome by comparison. What would you uh, recommend to someone who's trying to get into the radio industry? Well, I think, I mean, I've listened to a lot. Um, I mean, if you've got a particular interest, if you know that you're interested in music rather than speech, you should be listening to you know, Radio 1 and Radio 2 and Six Music and the BBC and One Extra, and of course some commercial radio stations to make the comparison. If you know you're interested in speech, you should obviously be listening to a bit of local radio, uh, BBC local radio and, and, and Radio 4 and 5 Live. But, I mean, what I would say is this, people will always tell you that it's impossible to get it. It's, you know, it's so difficult and there are so many people to... And, uh, you know, in a sort of limited way, that's kind of true, it's not easy to get in. Um, but, of course, by definition, people do get in, or else we wouldn't have a radio industry. Uh, most of the people in it are younger than I am, so there are people who are coming in the whole time. It's the first step that's the crucial one. You've got to get in somewhere. Once you're in, you'll pick it up, you know, and, you're, and you're good, 
you'll have lots of other chances to move around. Uh, so don't be too depressed if, if they say no for a while. You just need to get in the once, and then you'll be all right. But you know, if you if you feel you've got something to offer uh, in any field, whether it's you know comedy or drama or, or news and current affairs or you know reporting or whatever it is, uh, uh, you, you may not get in first time, second time, third time. But if you can just get your foot in a door somewhere, it'll help. And uh, you know, you may have to volunteer to do um, uh, follow a few shifts around or, or work experience or something. But just get going, um, because once you've got something to talk about to a potential employer about what you've done, it's just that much easier to be picked up. Mark Damasey, thank you very much. No, and good luck. Thank you very and good much. luck to your um, fellow colleagues.